Hello, everybody, and welcome to lesson two in our functions three booklet. You should be on page nine. And it's talking about solving systems of equations, linear, meaning they form a straight line by substitution. So today we're not graphing, we're using algebra. Okay, so no graphing involved. In the previous lesson, we learned that when the two lines intersect, we have one solution. If they are parallel lines, we have no solution. And if the lines are on top of each other or the same line, you have infinite many solutions. Those are the three choices, okay? But today we will solve systems by substitution. So let's get started. The transitive property of equality states that if a number A, these are numbers, is equal to another number B, and that same number B is equal to a third number C, that means that the first number has to be equal to the last number. A has to be equal to C. And I'll give you an example. So for example, if X is five and also Y is five, that means, so these little dots means, therefore, X has to equal Y because they both equal the same number. Yeah, so that's kind of what we're talking about today. And so here's a, a word example. Andre is the same height as Betty. Betty is the same height as Cleo. What can we conclude about the heights of Andre and Cleo? Um, they must be the same. I'm gonna write that differently. So they're all the same height. Andre and Cleo must be the same height as well. That's an application of transitive property. It's usually the first and the last. So if A is equal to B, a number, and B is equal to C, the first and the last have to be equal as well, okay? And then in number two, it says if X has the same value as 2Y plus three, so X is the same as this, and X is also the same as this, what can we conclude about the relationship between this and this? They must be the same. Because both are equal to the same number X. X is the same thing. You cannot have X three and then here four. It has to be the same number because we call it X, yeah? So if it's the same number is equal to that and that same number is equal to this, that means this and that has to be equal as well. If you understand that, you'll do well in this lesson. If it's hard for you to comprehend this, think about it again. They must be equal as well. So I can say 2y plus 3 is equal to 5y minus 6 because x is equal to x, it's the same number. Okay, so here we are, the substitution property of equality states that if a number a, these are numbers, any number, is equal to a second number b, then a can replace b in any equation or inequality. So we're doing a lot of replacing if it's equal, yeah, substituting. So here's a little picture. Given that heart is equal to two clouds, yeah, a heart is equal to two clouds. It says the value of one heart is equal to the value of two clouds. That's kind of a more fancier way to say it. 
For the expression below, use substitution to create an equivalent expression or same expression involving only clouds and numbers. So we want to eliminate the heart. We want only clouds. So it says three hearts plus five clouds. Well, a heart is equal to two clouds, so I can put two clouds in here for the heart. And I'll just draw a little cloud, yeah? So three heart is equal to two clouds, so I can substitute that in place of heart, yeah? And then finish the problem, plus five clouds. So notice now we have only clouds in our equate in our expression that's kind of what we want we don't want two different things we want only one item like this case it's a cloud in, in math it's usually x or y we would only want one um variable not two three times now we're going to simplify we're multiplying this out three times two is six clouds plus five clouds that means six plus five is 11 clouds. This is called combining like terms. And I want you to know that because we're doing a lot of that in this lesson. We can only combine like terms if they're the same. So I'm gonna put a big cloud around that. That's just by, I'm not going to do that because I don't want you to get confused. Okay. So six clouds plus five clouds is six plus five is 11 clouds. Yeah. So that would be a simplified version of all of this. So now let's look at math. Instead of clouds, we're using X and Y. Yeah. The heart is the Y and the X is a cloud. Yeah. The value of one Y is equal to the value of four X's because it's four times X. There's always a little times button. So if you see something like this, it's multiplying. You can also write four times X with parentheses, just so you see what it looks like when you multiply. For the expression below, use substitution to create an equivalent or same expression involving only X's and numbers. So no more Y's. You wanna eliminate one of the variable doesn't matter which one in this case so it says six times y plus five times x is six uh six y's so we don't want y here we want to use 4x because y is the same as 4x it tells me that up here so i'm substituting in place of y here 4x in parentheses because it's multiplying plus five X. Notice in my expression, I only have X's. I don't have any other variable. So I eliminated the Y. Now I'm gonna simplify six times four is 24 X's plus the five X's. These are like terms. I can combine them because they both have X's. So 24 plus five, is 29 and then I simply attach one X. Okay, like that, that's called combining like terms. Like terms are the ones that have the same variable. If they don't have the same variable, you cannot combine them, you leave it like it is. If this was a Y, you could not combine them. If this was just the number five, you could not combine them. They have to be exactly alike for you to add the numbers in front. So this is kind of the concept. Please take a minute to go over that again if you're not quite sure how that works because this is the main thing where we need to know how to do, substituting for something if it's the same value, okay? So this was page nine. And on page 10, we have a big problem that I'm gonna skip. I mean, it's just lengthy and I don't wanna make this video that long. So I'm gonna skip it on the next page. By the way, I like you to write notes on top, notes. So I know which ones were notes and which ones are homework. So we're skipping the next page, but the, the next page, which is page 11, refers to that previous page, which we didn't do. So I'm just gonna give you the information, okay? So it's about Malcolm and Zeke. 
in the previous page, so you're not confused where that came from. And we got two equations, one for Malcolm. The equation is y is x plus 30. And I just give you the equation. We figured it out on the previous page, but I'm skipping it. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. So the second equation was y is 4x. The slope is the number in front of the x. If there is no number, insert a one, not a zero. So slope is one. The y-intercept is the last number, which is 30. Here, the slope is four, the number in front of the x, and the y-intercept is zero because it's not there. Yeah, you don't need it. You don't need to write plus zero. It's understood the y-intercept is zero. And I don't like the one here, so I'm going to take that out just because it looks better. But it's understood it's a one. Slope is up one over one. Okay, so those are the two equations from the previous page, which I skipped. So you just have to take face value. These are the correct equations. Find the value of x that makes both equations true. Here's the deal. Do you notice how the y is the same, right? In both, this is one number, the same number. That means that the two expressions also have to be equal. Because this is equal to that means this has to equal that because they're the same. So now I'm gonna write x plus 30 is equal to four x. Yeah, because y is equal to y. Okay, so I just take the top equals the bottom. So now I have an equation with x's on both sides, which we're still practicing and reviewing solving equations, but it's a seventh grade skill, so you should know how to do it. But I wanna stress the fact that there's variables on both sides, x and x, yeah? So we have to solve for x. So I'm gonna give you a little clue. Solve for x. Notice we only have one variable, which is what we want. And that means get x alone on one side. It doesn't matter which side. It could be the left side or the right side, but I'm thinking ahead. And here's the deal, the x is positive. I wanna move it over to this side. I'm gonna subtract it, line it up. The x minus x is a zero pair that goes away. Now it's over on the right side. And we have plus 30 or 30 equals, yeah, I'm gonna insert a one here, four x minus one x is three x. So now we have your x on one side. And why did I choose this side? Is because my variable should be positive. If you think ahead, if I would subtract 4x from this side over here, it would give me a negative 3x. And then I'd have nothing left on this side, which is, means I have to put a zero. It's much more complicated. If you think ahead, how if I move, which side do I move it on to make my variable positive? 4 minus 1 is 3. And then divide by 3. That's a one-step equation now. So I'm gonna come up here, x equals 30 divided by three is 10. Okay. All right, so I found x, I still have to find y. We want both numbers, okay? Still have to find y. Don't stop at one number. You need X and Y, okay? A lot of students forget that. They're done with one number. Yay, I solved the system. No, you didn't, because a system of equations has two variables usually. One is X and one is Y. In our case, we still need to find Y. What does the solution X mean in the context of the problem? You know what? Because we did not do the previous page, we won't be able to answer that.
So we cannot answer that. Okay, because the context comes from what X means in the word problem. There was a word problem. From above, since X is uh, 10, notice I, I, I like to box these numbers so I can find them really easily. X is 10, use substitution to solve for Y. So Y is, I'm going back up here. And here's the clue. You can pick any one of these equations to substitute for x and to find y. It doesn't matter which equation you pick, you pick the one you like better. I'll, I'm gonna pick the top one. Y is x plus 30, it says, right? Yep, y equals x plus 30. And now I'm plugging in for x 10 because it's the same, x is 10. So y is 10 plus 30. And that means y is 40. Is that Malcolm? Yep. For seek, you'd only have to do one equation. In real life, you don't need to do both, but it's asking us to do both. So it's four times x, y is four times x is 10. See how I'm using the 10 to plug into the x? Y is 40. So it's 40 on the same. See how they match. You only have to pick one equation. So you got two to choose from, but one will give you the answer. And you pick the one you like better. See, there's two. That's called a system, two equations with two unknowns, and you pick one to plug in your answer to find the other variable. So what is the solution cannot answer again? Because we didn't do the previous page. Same reason, did not do previous, so we cannot answer. This is the same. We're not going to answer that. So here's our solution. We're just going to not answer that, but I want you to see the solution is an ordered pair, x and y. Notice x comes before y, so be careful. Let's go back up. x was 10, remember? So that number comes first. And y is 40. So that comes second. So this is my where the graphs would cross. Yeah. Or you can check. I'm going to use both equations from the top. Y is x plus 30. And I'm substituting for X and Y. So Y is 40 equals X is 10. Yep, that works. Yeah. And the second equation was, I'm going back to the top. The second equation was Y is 4X. This one. And I'm substituting for X and Y. So I'm substituting for X and Y to see if my equation balances. So Y is 40 and X is 10. See how that says it right here. So I'm balancing it out. Four times 10 is 40. It's balanced. It works. So both equations are true when I substitute my solution. And if you made a graph, this is where they would intersect at that point, 10 and 40, but we don't need to graph. We can do it all using substitution twice. 
we're going to use substitution two times. Okay, the first time we substitute here, the second time we substitute our answer to get the second variable. Okay. So this was mount number 11. And number 12 is, oh, by the way, let's write notes on top. Pause the video if it's too much and think about it. You wanna understand it. This is page 12. And I'm gonna make that notes. And the last two questions are homework. Find the solutions of these systems of equations using substitution, no graphing. And remember we're substituting two times. We're gonna substitute. So notice here's our, okay. So the clue on these is uh, get, one of the two variables alone. Doesn't matter which one. Alone on one side of the equation. It does not matter which variable you pick. Okay, so look at number one. Find the solutions for these systems using substitution. And it says we need to substitute twice. Notice how the y's are already alone. Okay, y's are alone. That's good. We don't have to do much. So because the y's are equal, these two are equal. So therefore, 2x has to be equal to x plus two. So that's the step to substitute, get out, get rid of the y's and these are equal. Okay, now we have an equation with one variable. That's the goal, you want one variable. Doesn't matter if it's x or y, you cannot solve an equation with two variables. But we are going to, this is a plus x. I'm moving this x to this side and combine it with that one. So I'm subtracting it. Zero pair goes away. 2x minus 1x is just simply x. So we now we know x is 2. But remember, that's just the first substitution. Now we have to find y. So you are going to pick one of the two equations, doesn't matter which one, I'm picking this one. You notice, it doesn't really matter, one of them. Does that make sense? Plug in for x2. And then finish the problem. You finish out the rest and then simplify. Okay, notice x is two, substitute the value for x. Do not write x any longer. And now we have an ordered pair. You wanna write your ordered pair, x comes first, y comes second. This is your solution. Okay. This one has X alone. See how X is already alone on one side, on the left side? So these two are equal to each other. They're the same number because it's the same variable. Therefore, these two are equal. So 5Y, eliminate the X is Y plus 20. No more X. You have one variable, the Y. Subtract this Y over here and here. 5y minus 1y is 4y. Bring down the equal sign, bring down the 20.
divide by four. Cancel the four, don't cancel the y. The y needs to stay. That's the variable we're looking for. 20 divided by four is five. Box that one answer. Now we need to find x, take one of the two equations. I'm picking the second one. Doesn't matter which one. And in place of y, I write five. No more y. And then my ordered pair is 25 comma, where's what, five. This is your solution. This is what we're looking for, the point of intersection or the numbers that when you plug them in make both equations balanced, yeah? So this is what we're doing. That's why I practice solving equations with you. The only trick is now we have variables on both sides of the equation, left side, right side. So you need to combine your variables on one side, pick the side, it doesn't matter which side. Okay, number three is trickier because none of the equations have a ver. Oh yes, they do. I'm gonna rewrite this one, the second one. So this right here turns into this. The y's are the same, so therefore this has to be the same. Subtract the x, draw your line like I showed you. And I'm thinking ahead because I want positive variable. If you think ahead, you can make your variable positive right away. 4x minus 1x is 3x. That's called combining like terms is 12. Just rewriting that, divide by three, both sides. Box it. Now we need to find y, I'll pick the first equation. X is four, so I plug in for x four. So now my solution is x comes first, don't make it the other way, and y comes second, and box it. Be careful when you write your solution so you don't start with the y, that would make it wrong. X comes before y in the alphabet and in math. Okay, four is trickier because none of the variables are alone on one side, so we have to fix it. So what I'm gonna do, is take this equation and I'm going to subtract the X. Actually, we don't need that arrow. I wanna show you the steps. So the X minus X goes away. That's zero, so don't write zero. The Y is negative. These are not like terms, you cannot combine them, so you simply rewrite it sideways. I told you that the variable has to be positive. We just simply switch all the signs to the opposite. See how that y becomes positive, four becomes negative, as x becomes positive. I just flip all the signs. Oh, did I make a mistake? Yes, of course. I don't want to solve for x, I need x alone. I gotta go back, made a mistake guys. I want X alone because here the X is alone. This is how we do math, we erase a lot. That's why we have erasers and use pencils. Okay, so we want the X alone because it's alone here. So if I want X alone, I simply add the Y. Negative Y plus Y is a zero pair, goes away. Bring down the X, bring down the equal sign, four plus Y. Don't combine these two, they're not like terms. 
Now the x's are alone. We said 2y equal to 4 plus y. These two are equal because your x's are equal, the same number. So this has the same value as that. So therefore you can set it equal to each other. Okay, I'm thinking ahead. I'm gonna subtract y on both sides. Bring it up here. 2y minus 1y is simply y. This goes away. And I have my first answer, y is 4. Then I take one of the two equations. I'll take the top one. I rewrite it. And in place of y, I substitute a 4. This is a times problem. So x is 2 times 4 is 8. So my ordered pair is eight and four. So you wanna write your solution like this. I, I look for that when I grade your papers, make sure you do it, okay? That's the last step. Okay, number five, the y is alone here. See in the first equation, y is equal to two x plus 12. So the y is alone on one side. So I'm gonna make this equation the same way. So I'm gonna move the four x by adding it. Zero pair goes away. Bring down the y, bring down the equal sign. Do not combine those. They're not like terms, rewrite it. The y's are the same, so therefore, 2x plus 12, this part equals this. Oh, 2 plus 4x. Now think you have left side, right side, you got x's on both sides. If I subtract 4x here and here, I get a negative x, so I'm gonna do the other way. I'm gonna subtract 2x. This goes away, bring down the 12, bring down the equal sign. 4x minus 2x is 2x. What is this here, 12? Okay, then I subtract two. Left side, right side, 10 is 2x. And I'll just shorten it, x is five because two times five is 10. Now I have to find the y, plug it in. Okay, so we have x is five and because there's no room, I'm taking this number and going up to one of the two original equations and I will plug in x in the first one. And so I'm just doing it mentally. Two times x, it means two times five plus 12 is 10 plus 12, so that's 22. So our ordered pair is five comma 22. Yeah, so I plugged it in here. Two times five is 10 plus 12. You multiply before you add. And number six. So you want to isolate one of the variables, but they're different. See how this one says X and this one Y? We need them both the same. So, hmm, I'm gonna change the first one around. I'm gonna add Y to both sides and also at the same time subtract X. So Y is equal to, now when you move the X from one side, to the other, all you have to do is change the sign to the opposite. So X is positive, now it becomes negative. And then finish the problem. So that's kind of a, a good um, way to make it shorter so you don't have to write so much. You just change the sign to the opposite. And this one is already Y alone, so this is equal to that. So three X plus one equals negative x plus five. And now we got to add x. Make sure you line up your like terms, your x's. You can't add it to the one because they're not like terms. 
3x plus 1 is 4x plus 1. Bring down your equal sign. Subtract the 1. 4x equals 5 minus 1 is 4. That means x is 1. I'm shortening this a little bit. Now we need to find y. Pick one of the original equations. Actually, yeah, I, I'll pick the second one. In place of x, I write 1. That's the second substitution. 3 times 1 is 3. Finish the problem. And your solution is 1 comma 4. Okay. Now these two down here are different. They're saying, they don't say solve. It says one of these systems has no solutions. So it would be the same equation. And one has, no, no solutions means parallel lines. And one has infinite numbers of solution means the same line. Use any strategy to decide which is which and explain how you know. So notice the slope here is the same. So these two lines are parallel. Same slope, different y-intercept. Notice the y-intercept here is zero and here it's two. So these two lines are parallel and that means they have no solution because they'll never intersect. Okay, so then that this one has to be the one with infinite many. I'm gonna divide everything by two here to get rid of the two in front of the y. Four divided by two is two x plus two divided by two is one. Notice how it's the same equation. Both equations are the same. Equivalent is the word. Therefore, little three dots, infinite many solutions. Each point on those two lines, they are on top of each other, right? Remember, I showed you that in lesson one, I think. And so each point is a solution. Infinite many solutions. So even so in the beginning, the two equations didn't look the same, but if you get y alone and you divide everything by two, it turns out they are the same. Sometimes you have to manipulate the equation. So this was page 12. Number third, page 13 is actually homework and there is a graph. I just noticed that and I promised you no graphing, but they want you to graph these two lines and then see where the point of intersection is and then answer the question, okay? And then here you have to solve by using substitution. So this would be the math, the algebra, what we've been doing. And then it's asking you, why is it, better to graph or substitution. So that's page 13. These are, now we're getting a little bit, it's a step up. These are notes. This makes it even a little bit more difficult. We're gonna go up. I knew there was something happening here. So let's see, I'm gonna give you a problem. And if you are not quite sure what's happening or how did that work, check out, pause the video and go back. Okay, or just pause the video and look at it. So here's our question. Two equations with two unknowns, which is called a system of equations.
And sometimes you'll see these funny sideways mustache brackets. They just mean it's a system. Yeah, this is the symbol for system of equations. And remember, our goal is to find X and Y that makes both equations true. So I'm gonna put steps over here. So isolate one variable, doesn't matter which one, in one of the equations doesn't matter which one. So you pick the one you like better or it's easier. So if you look at this first equation, if you subtract two X from both, if you add two X to both sides, you're going to have Y alone. So it doesn't matter which variable you isolate. So now Y is equal to, remember the little trick, if you move the, negative 2x to the other side of your equal sign, it becomes positive 2x. That's all it is. And then finish the problem. So you just switch the sign. Okay. So now we have this equation. And in place of y, I'm going to write 2x minus 1. So the second step in place of y In the second equation, right, two X minus one. And I like to put it in parentheses. So now here comes the big step. So two X minus one goes in place of y, that's the substitution. So I'm gonna start from left to right, watch. I'm starting with the two. Now I'm not writing y, I'm gonna write two x minus one in parentheses, because that's equal to y. And then I'm finishing the problem, minus three x equals negative five. Notice now we have an equation with one variable, x. If you have an equation with still x and y, you made a mistake in the substitution process. Now we're gonna solve this equation. This is gonna be lengthy. So I'm gonna write step three. You should have one variable. equation with one variable, either X or Y. And you solve it. Now it's becoming a little tricky. Do you remember the distributive property when you have parentheses, two times two is four X, two times negative one is negative two. Finish the problem, minus three X equals negative five. Okay, that's the first step. Now combine like terms. on left side. Four X minus three X are like terms. You're making the question shorter that way. Four X minus three X is one X minus two equals negative five. Okay. just one X or X. So I'm gonna erase the one. I don't like it, but it's there. Add two. X is negative three. Okay, so that's the first step. Now we have to find Y. 
So you go back up to your original problem. You can pick either this equation or this one. Yeah, this one looks easier to me because it already has the y alone. So I'm picking this equation. So you go back up to the top. This is the same as that one. So I'm picking the easier one and I'm plugging in for x negative three. Yeah, so I'm taking this equation right here. In place of x, I'm putting negative three. Two times negative three is negative six. Minus one. So the solution is, you think first the x, then the y. Okay, so that's a trickier step here because you're making the problem much bigger. Okay. Another way could be to take the second equation and get the y alone and then make the two right sides equal to each other. But when you get y alone here, you're gonna end up with a bunch of fractions and nobody likes fractions in a math problem. That's why this is easier actually, believe it or not. Okay, number two, solve the following system using substitution. So no graph. Hint, isolate one variable in one of the equations. So it's, remember step one, isolate one variable in one of the equations. Just what I wrote, isn't that funny? I didn't even read that. So you pick one of the two equations and you go, well, to, to isolate an X or Y here would make it tricky, but you can do it here easily. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna isolate the X and move the Y to the other side. Now this is negative y on the other side, it's positive y, but this is still negative one. Okay, now in place of x, I'm gonna write this because x is the same. So I will start with the three, you go to the second equation, not the first one. The first one you're done with. You go to the other equation and you plug in the expression here for x in parentheses. So you start from left to right. When you get to the x, you pause and put y minus one in parentheses. Then you finish the question. Okay, so that's the first substitution. Now let's practice solving this equation. Do I have a room up here? Yeah. So you remember, I like you to draw a line, left side, right side. First, we solve the parentheses. That's always first. Multiply everything by three. Three times y is three y, minus three times one is three. Finish the problem. So that's the first step. Now combine like terms. Which numbers have the same variable on the left side? It doesn't have to be the left side, but that's where my like terms are. It could be the right side. So 3y minus 4y. Those are like terms, not the 3 here. No, 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 no. 3y minus 4y is three minus four is negative one y. So we have negative one y. We still have that negative three equals negative two. Um, add three. Negative one y equals one. 
negative one, y, change the sign to make it positive, make that negative. Then find x. Here comes the second substitution. Go back up here to the top and notice this equation works really well because x is already alone. So x is my minus one and in y I'm putting negative one. So the solution is negative two comma, where's my y over here, negative one. Now here's the deal guys, when I harp on you about being organized and showing your work, it's not because I want to pester you. It's because the more organized you are, like I'm boxing these numbers so I can find them easily. I work downward. Math is working not sideways. It works down. And I um, leave a little room between each step, kind of like, okay, now I'm not going to squeeze this part over here so that my paper looks organized and I can find, if I make a mistake, I can actually go back and see where I made that mistake. That's how you work math. So if you just have been trying in your head solving equations, that's okay when they're simple. But at this point, we really have to do the math and do it correctly and not just do it in your head. Okay, because eventually this will be almost impossible to figure out in your head. Okay, so that's the harder part of substitution. Now let's go, this was page 14, which were notes. Let's look at page 15. What do we have, page 15? Oh my goodness, I have more notes. Huh. Almost done, almost done guys. Okay, notice these X's are the same. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have I'm running out of time. So I'm gonna just get you the problem started. The X's are the same, they're already isolated. So solve three Y plus one equals Y plus five. So I'm gonna just write solve. Remember those funny brackets just mean it's a system. On this one, I would get Y alone, move the two X to the other side. Now it becomes positive. And then you can say 2x plus 2 equals 2x plus 6. On this one, you'll have no solution because you subtract 2x on both sides. Here's your equal sign. And you have 2 is equal to 6, which is not true. No solution. Just showing you this one. That That's because the lines have the same slope. They're parallel lines. See how the slope is two and two? Different y-intercept, yeah. Okay, on this one, hmm, I'm gonna get x alone. So that means I have x is equal to, the y becomes positive on the other side. And then you plug that into x and solve. So I'm going to rewrite it, 3y plus y plus 1 equals negative 7. You don't even need the parentheses on that one. So on this one, I would isolate the y and move the 6 to the other side of the equal sign. Remember, the equal sign is the one so we have 4x minus 6. And then you plug that into y. So 2x minus 4x minus 6. And then finish the problem. This minus means it's a negative 1. You're distributing a negative 1. Be careful. OK, I'm going to stop here. I wanted to show you this one, but I do it differently. I'm gonna do that real quick. 
The sum of two numbers is 136. Sum means you're adding two numbers and they're adding two numbers and the answer is 136. One number is five less than twice the number, twice the other. So the first number, I'll call it X, and the second number is five less than twice. So it's two X minus five. And then you can say X plus two X minus five is equal to 136 and solve. First you find X and then you plug it in here to find the second number, find both numbers. And I'm going to stop. That's a lot, a lot of information. This was page 15. The next page is homework. Whew. Don't have to show you that. Hopefully you'll figure it out. If not, come to tutoring, I'll help you. And that's the end of lesson two. Yeah, with our systems. Good luck to you.